Today, I'm going to show you how to make a dessert that will show your family how much you love them on Valentine's Day or any other day of the year. Thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. Today I'm making Boston Cream Pie. It's one of my favorite desserts and it's one I've not made in a long, long time. Years ago, I bought a Marianne pan. The only thing I've ever made in this pan is a Boston Cream Pie. And then we moved, and then we moved again, and again. And somewhere in all of those moves, I lost my recipe. Well, last night, I decided I wanted Boston cream pie, and I went looking for a recipe. And I didn't find one that was what I wanted. So I've taken three separate recipes and combined them into one Boston cream pie recipe. First up, I have two eggs that I'm going to pour into the bowl of my stand mixer. I have the paddle attachment on, going to turn it on to about four and I'm going to let it beat the eggs for about two and a half minutes. Okay, the eggs are well beaten. Now I'm going to slowly pour in a cup of sugar and let that mix in. Once I get all the sugar in there, I'm going to let it beat the eggs and sugar together for two and a half minutes. My recipe says to add a cup of flour that I've mixed an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder into. So I've got a cup of flour with the salt and baking powder. I'm going to turn this to low. And I'm also going to mix in a half cup of hot milk with a tablespoon of butter. Let's mix all those together. I just want those to just combine and make a nice smooth batter. To that, I have a teaspoon of vanilla, just to give it a little flavoring. All right, and it's all mixed together now. All right, so here's my Mary Ann pan. I'm going to give it a good spray around the edges with oil, and then in the middle, I have a piece of parchment paper. So the Marianne pan has been prepared. I'm going to pour my batter into the pan. Wow. Okay, and that went all the way to the top. Just in case this overflows in the oven, I'm going to put a pizza pan underneath it. So the cake is in the oven. 375 to bake for 20 minutes. But first, <laughs> I've got to grab the cake out of the oven. It's springing back now when I touch it, so the cake is done. I'm going to let it sit here and cool for 10 to 15 minutes. The cake did overflow just a bit. I'm really not worried about it, other than it might want to stick a bit around the edges where it did go over. I'm just going around and breaking that off and I'm hopeful that when I pour the ganache over it that it will cover these edges and now I know next time that I use this recipe that I need to make cupcakes. <laughs> Just some of the edge, let's give it a taste. It's a nice light cake. It's got a lovely flavor to it. It's going to be nice and light and fluffy and really tasty. Okay. All right, it came out almost perfectly. Just one little section here stuck. And then here's the parchment paper, pulling that off. It's nice and light and golden, and it's a really pretty color. Okay, so just keeping it real today. I've had a miserable afternoon cooking. I put together a very yummy tasting custard earlier and it never did set up properly. So 
down the drain it went and here we go again with a different recipe this time let's see if this one will work first thing I'm going to do is turn this on to medium heat and I have a cup of milk that I'm going to pour in while my milk is heating I have three egg yolks and I'm going to whisk in a third of a cup of sugar to mix these in together. Now I'm supposed to do this until they're light and fluffy. So I'll be whisking for a, a minute or two. And now I have two tablespoons of cornstarch to add to this and I'm going to whisk that in until there are no lumps. <laughs> and I have <laughs> cornstarch going everywhere. I told you this has just been one miserable day cooking. Things are tasting good. They're just making messes and not turning out nice. But you know, we all have those days, right? Okay, no more lumps. The milk is hot. It's starting to steam. I'm going to take it off of the eye just a little bit at a time. I'm going to drizzle it into my egg mixture and I'm going to do this just a bit at a time to temper the eggs so that they don't turn into scrambled eggs when I put the put them into the milk and I'm drizzling this in about a tablespoon at a time okay sorry about the sound problem um, I forgot to turn my microphone on so I just I did not have good sound there Hopefully it's better now, and let's just keep on moving with it. Let's add some more. I wanna make sure that these are nice and warm before I pour this into the milk. One more dipper of egg. I mean, <laughs> one more dipper of milk into the egg, and that should be enough. Putting the milk back on the eye. Okay, it's starting to steam again, so I'm going to start whisking and pouring the egg mixture into the milk. That way everything incorporates and hopefully does not scramble. Now I'm going to stir until it thickens. When you're doing this, make sure that you keep your spoon on the bottom of the pan and that you're not just going around the outside of the pan. You want to cover all the bottom of the pan so that it doesn't stick and it doesn't start to burn. It's getting nice and thick. It's smooth as can be. I'm going to turn it off and we'll move it off the heat. I have a tablespoon of butter that I've cut into quarters and I have two teaspoons of vanilla flavoring I'm going to pour in and I will just Stir this until the butter melts. Now I'm going to pour the custard into this bowl. And now I'm going to cover it with some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator to cool. Now when I cover it, I'm not just putting it over the top of the bowl. You actually want to put the plastic wrap on top of the custard. So you want it touching the custard so that as it cools, it does not develop a thick film over the top. Okay, we are to the last parts of putting together the Boston cream pie. The cake has been made. It's cooled completely. I have the um, cream part of the Boston cream pie. It has cooled and it has set up really nicely into a beautiful cream. I'm going to put this in the middle. Spread it across and fill the cavity that's left there from the Mary Ann pan. And I try to get it as smooth as I can so that when I pour the chocolate over it, it will go on smoothly. The final step is making the ganache. And I have equal amounts 
of chocolate chips and heavy whipping cream. So I have one cup of each and I want to heat this until the cream gets hot. I like to stir it while it's heating to make sure that it doesn't start burning and sticking on the bottom. And I'm starting to see some steam, so I want it to be nice and hot because I'm going to pour the heavy whipping cream into the chocolate chips. And let's go ahead and do that. I'll stir this while I do. And just in case the milk cooled too much when I poured it in, I had water boiling and I basically I turned it into a double boiler. But you always make sure that the bottom of your bowl is not touching the top of your water. You don't want it to touch each other. And that's keeping everything nice and warm so that I can stir it together, melt those chips. I'm going to keep stirring until it's nice and smooth. It really doesn't take long for this to come together, but you do have to be patient, you do have to stir, and you don't want to turn your heat up too high. Okay, it's smooth, so I'm going to remove it from the heat. And now I have a tablespoon of butter. Stir that in. And that just helps it to have a nice gloss. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. I always like to add a little vanilla to my chocolate. Stir that together. Now I need to let this cool a little bit. It's a little too hot to pour on top of the cold cake and the cold filling. So, right, I'm going to let this cool for about 5 or 10 minutes, and then I'll be back to put it on top of the cake. The ganache has cooled. I'm just going to pour it over the top, and let it start making its way out to the edges. And I want it to spill off the edge just a little bit. Ta-da! <laughs> We now have a Boston cream pie. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for maybe half an hour or so, and then I'll be slicing into this and having some dessert. Don't think I'm going to do that on camera today. I have tasted each individual layer, and together they're going to be great. The cake is nice and light. It has a very delicate flavor to it. The custard that I put in the middle is nice and creamy, also has a lovely vanilla flavor to it. And then this chocolate ganache over the top, just the right amount of bitter from the chocolate chips and just enough sweet to complement the rest of the Boston cream pie. The full recipe will be in the description box below along with links to my social media. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure and give it a big thumbs up. If you've not already, please do subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you find out every time I upload a new video to YouTube. Thanks for watching. God bless.